Hello. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Jill. I'm Andy. And we're here for this, which we kind of are actually showing some already, for a change. We're already in here, so and we've we're actually not, already we're, done because we. <laughs> so that's a cockpit theatre. We're not there. <laughs> we were supposed to be outdoors in the Ken Dodd Theatre to watch the rubbish Shakespeare Company. But um, let me just give you a little <laughs> show of exactly what it's like out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so outdoor theatre is not really going to work in this condition. That's a big old storm cloud. So basically, I bought deck chairs and broke summer. And because it is literally the <laughs> since I bought deck chairs, um, we've now actually been in and out. We're on our way out yes. from watching the production. But we will give you a proper review when we get home. Yeah. In like two seconds for you. <laughs> there is the, the Ken Dodd outdoor space that we've never actually managed to sit in. But yeah, you can see it's wetter than an otter's pocket out there at the minute. And we're back in the room. Much later. Much later. <laughs> also drier. Because <laughs> yes. we got very wet walking to the car. <laughs> yeah, it was not a dry day. It really wasn't. So the incomplete works of Shakespeare is essentially it's an improvised Shakespeare production. So the concept is that William Shakespeare has supposed to have turned up for these five actors to get the script and to perform for uh, King James. But he doesn't turn up. But he doesn't turn up. <laughs> Flaky. Yeah, so they've got <laughs> to try and create something on the hoof for the king. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> so they take suggestions from the audience. So we picked the... A time period was... Yeah, we picked... So it was the time period and the, yeah. they like... Much with all of improvised shows, they take a couple of suggestions and then vote with cheers from the audience yeah. so um there was select the time period the location yeah the place and a problem yeah like a a theme yeah. i guess yeah so ours was ancient egypt no no it wasn't ancient greece ancient greece <laughs> Athens. <laughs> the Egyptologist automatically went ancient and the word egypt comes after it <laughs> yeah ancient greece athens and the theme was two people not allowed to marry. Yeah, I think that was it. So, um, yeah, it was, it was all put on by the rubbish Shakespeare Company who do this improvised uh, show, but they also do um, like a lot of work going to schools and sort of making a friendly introduction to Shakespeare. Yeah. Um, because... <laughs> Let's be honest, a lot of people don't get a, a nice <laughs> introduction to Shakespeare. No, um, it's usually just GCSE, GCSE, here's some Shakespeare, learn it. <laughs> Bit blunt. Like, I, when I was in school, so when I was in primary school, there was a group that came into my school and we put on the Merchant of Venice, but it was my school and two other schools oh, right. in the, the area. Because oh, okay. I remember that there was... I can't remember his name because he was from one of the other schools. Mm. But he could not get, all that glitters is not gold, often have you heard this told. That was his only line in the entire thing. And he couldn't get it right, ever. And we were like, um, they put it on in the local high school and we obviously got bus over. And I remember being sat near him on the bus just going, all that glitters is not gold, often have you heard this told. All that glitters is not gold. Wow. It's it literally I can, that's pretty much the only line that I know by heart from Shakespeare. Actually, no, it's not because I, I totally know from having a Leonardo DiCaprio love. So Joe would be a pushy theatre mum. <laughs> yeah, I totally would. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're getting off very much off topic here. Well, and I think, feel like I should finish that half sentence then of having a Leonardo DiCaprio appreciation in my teens. So. I know a lot of uh, Romeo and Juliet by how. Oh, and uh, Othello, because I just like an old, an old black ram is topping your white you. <laughs> Tangent. Off, <laughs> off with the wind. Much like the randomness of this show. <laughs> I like how you tried to bring that back then. <laughs> That's a nice segue yeah. though. <laughs> Rubbish Shakespeare Company do a lot of outreach stuff to try and encourage people to experience Shakespeare. So, yeah. Our actual production, well, first of all, your lordship, uh, Andy was randomly selected to be King James. Yeah, don't know why. So I guess because I was on the front row 
and <laughs> it does help. Oh, my mum and auntie have been to some of the Shakespeare productions before, and uh, they said that there was a somebody was picked as King James there. I think they went to a Midsummer Night's Dream. Did they? I think so. Oh, I couldn't imagine that. Yeah, I, th I imagine that would be chaotic. Crazy. Yeah, Mid um, Midsummer Night's Dream, because we've seen a lot of it recently, <laughs> is chaotic in itself, but yeah, yeah, with them guys. I bet it would be amazing. She said it was hilarious, mm. and that, um, much like they did with you, they crowned somebody as King James. Yeah, so at the end of the show as well, um, I had to give my approval or disapproval <laughs> for the show, and I was feeling kind, so I gave my approval. <laughs> it's a good you were feeling kind, because it was a really good show. <laughs> <laughs> So what was, what was our story? The, the... So there were two people who couldn't marry who, I'll be honest, I can't remember the names, but they were... And one they of... couldn't remember the names. Well, yeah, one of, them was, <laughs> one of them was Heracles. Heracles. Had some involvement in it. Because there was this, like, there was the main story of two people who can't marry. Mm -hmm. But then there was, like, almost a side story or a side quest. <laughs> of people looking for sun cream. Yeah, inventing sun cream, but... Because they do, they obviously make it all up on the fly. They have, there's four actors and one musician who is sort of keeping, keeping the, the time. timing and <laughs> keeps announcing when it's like a new act and a new scene. And the four actors, they essentially just do a lot of quick change, yeah. like um, costumes. So things like putting on a wig, putting on a jacket that. Who knows if he ever got the jacket off at the end? No. Maybe he's still got his arm yeah. stuck in it. Yeah. So um, there's some sort of like almost Edwardian jacket that he put on, and it, it, it just very ornate. Very, and then Looked tried to expensive. take it off. His arm got stuck in it, and then he tried to pull it, and all you heard was it's like, mm, yeah. better leave that. <laughs> it's, it's never good, really, is it, when you're trying to bow and you can you've got a jacket on your arm and everyone's heard the very audible rip <laughs> yeah um so yeah they do things like quick clothes jackets wigs bed sheets for togas yeah things like Classic. that um <laughs> at the start one of them came out and was like saying about the search for the sun cream and the other one didn't have a toga on and he was like you're naked man <laughs> why are you naked <laughs> <laughs> but i was in pain laughing yeah i think it was when they went into the audience to find a uh, magical elixir yes. and took somebody's uh, can of Guinness that they finished off. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not sure if they were related to them or not. I don't think they were. Think, yeah. So the first person picked it up and was all like, oh, I'm pretending to drink it. Oh. And then the <laughs> next person just went, I've just got to drink it. <laughs> and then the third person went, I've just got to finish it off. <laughs> In the middle of a show, mind you. But it was brilliant because they uh, then used the fact that it was a pint of Guinness as the magical Irish elixir and all started Irish dancing and talking with an Irish accent. It took a bizarre turn, yeah. <laughs> there was also um, the magical sun cream ended up being, they asked if anyone had any creams and <laughs> somebody Ointment. had a Vaseline. Yeah, and... a little Vaseline tin, so <laughs> that got took as the, the elixir. Yeah. Absolute crazy fun. Oh dear. It was um, interesting. And also, uh, because it was supposed to be outside, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, they decided to have it in the studio, much to the delight of the actors, <laughs> because yeah. it was hammering it down when but we first turned up. Every other production that they'd done had been outside Side. that weekend, and it had not been dry for any of them. No, and uh, they made a bit of a joke of that, saying about, oh, well, there's not that many people turned up. I wonder if it would be better if the weather was better or if we knew we were inside for the weather to start <laughs> we, with. Yeah, we'll never know how that has impacted <laughs> ticket sales. Um, I think the fact that there were so few people and there were absolutely no children yeah. in the audience, it meant they could be a lot more risque. Thing. Yeah, I think they yeah they, they pushed it pushed it a bit more than yeah. Like there was a couple of times where uh, they'd be like, "Oh, I'm so glad that there are no children around because <laughs> <laughs> they were they, they knew they were like right on the the edge." They're pushing of, it, yeah. Yeah, really, really enjoyed it, and I think we will definitely be going to yeah. see. So you're gonna tell more details about the the companies themselves. I am because uh, 
his notes prepared earlier. <laughs> so, Robert Shakespeare Company are taking the incomplete works of Shakespeare up to Edinburgh Fringe. In fact, when this video goes up, they are there right now. Um, so, from the 2nd to the 28th of August, they are doing daily shows at Pleasance Above. I will obviously leave all the details down in the description box down there um, yeah. because they also have the rubbish Romeo and Juliet yeah now we really wanted to go and see this it was on as part of the Liverpool uh, theatre festival yeah. but it was on at half past one and if you both work in full time yeah couldn't make that unfortunately and I'm really gutted because the the plot line of it says that it's Romeo and Juliet with sausage rolls and I don't know more than that, but yeah. all the reviews I've seen of it say that it is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I can imagine. And that's also on at Edinburgh Fringe, so I think in an afternoon they do Rubbish, Romeo and Juliet, and then on an evening they do the incomplete works of Shakespeare, but yeah. like I say, all the details down below. So if you happen to find yourself at Edinburgh Fringe, we would definitely recommend going to see this. It's quite funny how many actual things we've seen recently where people are heading up to Fringe. I know. Do you think that we need to schedule a trip to Edinburgh Fringe next year? How rich do you think I am? <laughs> I've, I've given you a year's notice, I've not said next week. <laughs> Jesus, cost a bloody fortune! The hotel's alone. What was it you say that some people are staying in Glasgow so, and getting a train in because it's cheaper than staying yeah, in Edinburgh? I, I know somebody who has performed for a few years at a uh, Fringe Festival and they couldn't find anywhere to stay, sort of that was more local or was within an acceptable price range. So they ended up uh, all renting a house together for the month in Glasgow and then getting the train in every day Jeez and back because you. that was the cheapest option based on. Yeah, going to need more than a year's notice for that level. But we'll see. Mm. Ooh, ice cream pan. <laughs> Matic interlude <there> from <laughs> the ice cream pan and a dog that was howling in time to it. It's still going. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love clicking the record button and having every single noise occur. <laughs> Pretty much. So, ratings out of five. Uh, what would you rate the incomplete works of Shakespeare? I think I'll give it a four out of five. Oh, I thought I was about to say you're being really harsh there because I was going to be like, no, it needs to be a five. But then I'm thinking what else I've given fours to and I'm like, yeah, no, fours actually... Yeah. really good yeah. isn't it yeah. like yeah four out of five as well making a grand total with amazing maths there of eight out of ten mm. i did nearly say out of eight out of five so <laughs> <laughs> eight out of five eight out of five perfect score <laughs> and yeah apologies that i didn't film any of the like curtain call bit it wasn't it, really just a curtain call, it just sort of stopped and then everyone was like, yay, and everyone then started yeah. running around being crazy. It's it's quite hard in um, like improvised shows to record any curtain call, but... No, and also they were like there in front of us, they were like two, <laughs> two three, four in front of us, so it's like, nah, mm, they're not, not putting the camera up in their face. It just felt a bit rude. It did. But, but go and check them out because they're fantastic. And all the details are down below in the description box. So thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Maybe hit the subscribe button. I know we've got quite a bit of content to come up um, because we're massively behind on filming stuff. <laughs> quite a bit of content. Massively. And a whole nine subscribers. So, you know, if you could get us to double figures. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more uh, reviews and stuff. And yeah, we've, we've got a lot of, um, so we're, we're very behind filming as you just yeah. said, we've got a lot of Shakespeare yeah. reviews coming up, but we do other things as well, like museums and restaurants and stuff. So. Pods and sods. Yeah, <laughs> all sorts of things along the M62 corridor, but only between Liverpool and Manchester because then you get into the Pennines and that's a bit too far to that's drive. That's a weird country. <laughs> said as a Lancaster, Lancashire boy there, weren't you? <laughs> Oh, white roses. Oh. <laughs> See you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.